This is a question about torsion in shafts. Um, in part A, we're asked about a solid shaft. Um, it is rotating at 300 RPM, transmitting 250 kilowatts, and there's a maximum shear stress of 60 megapascals. And we want to know what is the, uh, let me just check the question, calculate the necessary shaft diameter. Um, so the first thing that we need to do when we get a power and a rotary, uh, a speed of rotation, uh, we can convert those into a torque and a torque is useful because it turns up in the torsion equation and so we can um, work out what kinds of uh, geometry we need from the torsion equation. So I'm going to use the equation P equals 2 pi n t over 60. Um, that's derived from power equals torque times omega, um, the uh, rotational velocity, and um, 2 pi over 60 converts uh, from radians per second into RPM. N is a number in RPM, and T is a uh, torque. So I can rearrange this to say torque equals uh, 60 p over 2 pi n which equals 60 times 250,000 divided by 2 divided by pi divided by 300 and that comes out as 7960 7957 on my calculator but I'll say 7960 newton meters um, uh, is the the torque that's required here. Um, next we need to use the torsion equation which says T over J equals tau over R. Remember there's another equality within the torsion equation which would relate things to the twist angle phi um, but we're not interested in the the amount of twist here so we just ignore that bit of things. We can pick any two parts of the torsion equation and just focus on them. Uh, so now what I can do is just to make a note over here that uh, for a solid shaft j equals uh, pi d to the 4 on 32. Uh, this equation, this equation and this equation, uh, the three main equations I've used so far, they're all in your um, data sheet. Um, but you have to know when to use them but you don't have to memorize. Um, so I suppose the other thing to note, sorry, is that um, uh, R equals D on 2. Radius is half of diameter. It's just worth being clear where everything's going to come from uh, because I'm about to start substituting in. Um, what we're going to want to find is a diameter, so I'm going to substitute for diameters everywhere. Uh, torque we know divided by pi d on 4 over 32 equals maximum shear stress divided by maximum radius, which is d on 2. Um, when I rearrange all of that, the first thing that's helpful to do, I've got denominators within denominators here. Um, if you're dividing by something that itself is divided by something, this 32 moves up to the top. So I get 32t over pi d to the 4 equals 2 tau over d. And when I rearrange that, um, you can take as many steps as you want here, but you'll end up with d cubed equals 16 t over pi times tau. And so from there, um, I can put in some numbers, that's 16 times 7960, the number I calculated up here, divided by pi times the maximum shear stress, which is 60 times 10 to the 6. Which comes out to be 6.756 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, and then that means d equals, and here you need to know how to do a cube root on your calculator, um, 
so check that you can find that button. It's 0 0.0877 dot 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 meters, which is 87.7 millimeters. So that's the diameter of shaft you need in order to have a shear stress which is no greater than 60 megapascals. Um, and that is part A solved. In part B we're asked the same thing but this time we've got a hollow shaft which looks like this. Um, and it's got an outer radius which I'll call capital D and an, sorry, an outer diameter which I'll call capital D, an inner diameter which I'll call small d and we're told in the question that the inside diameter is one half the outside diameter so small d equals capital D on 2. Now I'm just going to jump straight in, we're doing similar calculations before to before so I need to know that j equals and for a hollow shaft again it's on your data sheet it's pi capital D to the 4 minus small d to the 4 on 32 and here I can note small d to the 4 equals d on 2 to the 4 that's straight off this uh, definition of small d and that equals d on 4 over 2 to the sorry d to the 4 over 2 to the 4 which equals d to the 4 over 16 so this is pi d to the 4 minus d to the 4 on 16 all over 32 which equals pi times 15 over 16 capital D to the 4 all over 32 which ends up equaling um, 15 pi d to the 4 on 512 that is the polar moment of inertia for this hollow shaft um, in terms of capital D, the outside radius. Um, also, as before, we need to note, well, I guess small, small d um, is also r here. So we've got r equals small d equals capital D on 2. The distance from the center of the pipe to the outside of the pipe, r, is the same as the is a half of capital D which is in fact the same as what we've got for small d. Um, so that gets us our j and our r and now we can do effectively the same calculations we did in part a. We use the um, torsion equation and say t over j equals tau over r so therefore um, we've got the same torque as before well I'll do it all in um, in algebraic terms and then only put numbers in at the end so t over 15 pi capital D to the 4 on 512 equals tau over capital D on 2 and rearranging that um, I'll get 256 capital T over 15 pi d cubed equals tau um, or d cubed equals 15 uh, 256t over 15 pi tau. You'll notice that you have to be reasonably happy here with um, rearranging equations uh, of this kind of form. There's a lot of it to do and I'm doing it at about the speed that you probably want to be up to by the time the exam comes around. Um, that equals, again we can put in numbers for this, that's 256 times 7960 divided by 15 times pi times 60 times 10 to the 6. comes out as 7.207 times 10 to the minus 4. That means that capital D equals, again make sure you know where your cube root button is, 0 0.0891 uh, 
six five meters. Uh, that answer there was in cubic meters, by the way, because um, it was d cubed, uh, which is about uh, well, I'll call that eighty nine point seven millimeters to three decimal places. So we've got um, just to look then at where we've got to in part A with a solid shaft we had um, a diameter of this one here it's 87.7 millimeters so the area is pi r squared which equals um, six point zero four zero times ten to the minus three zero four one times ten to the minus three I suppose uh, square meters and in part B where we had a hollow shaft we've got an outside diameter of 89.7 millimeters and an inside diameter of one half that which is 44.9 millimeters to three decimal places and the area is going to be pi times the outer radius squared to minus pi times the inner radius squared so it's the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle and that's to get the shaded area here Uh, sorry, I'm not doing this calculation very quickly here. Um, 0 0.0225. I'm getting 4.743 times 10 to the minus 3 square meters as my area. Um, so this is significantly lower, the, the hollow shaft has a significantly lower area than the solid shaft, that means it's going to have a significantly lower volume and so you're saving weight and everything else by using a hollow shaft and in some ways that's kind of the key uh, outcome from this question. I'm just going to try and finish this on this sheet percent saving equals uh, 6.041 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 4.743 times 10 to the minus 3 all over 6.041 times 10 to the minus 3 which equals 0.0225 21.5%. It comes out as 0.2148, uh, which is the same as 21.5%. So we're saving about over 20% of our material by using a hollow shaft uh, rather than a solid shaft. And um, this question is all about how you do the calculation to find that. In general, if you're designing shafts, if you can allow for a slightly larger diameter and perhaps a slightly la uh, more complicated manufacturing process, you'll be able to save material by using a hollow shaft.